celeb slam Prince Harry and Meghan Markle and the palace remained silent as they claim they were in a near catastrophic car chase. Shame on the lawyers for letting them publish this because it actually just made them look a bit silly. Plus, royal expert Richard Aikes breaks down what went wrong and what could have been avoided in Harry and Meghan's frightening paparazzi run-in as he loses his bid for police protection in the UK. It's not a case of if uh, actions, hostile actions will occur against a couple, it's a case of when. Um, Prince Harry needs professional security. And Prince William shows off his rowing skills, David Beckham gives the king a special gift, and Princess Kate proves she is Queen Bee. The purpose of the event was to encourage children and their families um, to get outside, have their own picnic, you know, be a part of nature, which is a huge, huge project of the Princess of Wales. We've got that plus so much more in today's Royally S. Hello to our fellow royal lovers and welcome to Royally Us. I'm Christina, that's Christine, and we got a lot of big news this week. Of course, uh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are dominating the headlines after this near catastrophic um, paparazzi chase. Their bid to use uh, to the bid lo to lose police protection in the UK. So a lot going on. Yep, I know this is going to be a big week for comments. So I yes. love what everyone thinks about this week, but we can talk about last week's comments. <laughs> right. Um, Brenda says the whole coronation weekend was amazing, and it was lovely to see George, Charlotte, and Louis enjoying everything. I've seen Princess Catherine playing the piano during Christmas carols, um, and she's really talented and beautiful. Yes, um, it was a beautiful coronation weekend, um, and I, it seems like forever ago, but really not that long ago at all. Was it only two weeks ago? Was right. I know. <laughs> it, seems impossible. it seems impossible. And then Mark says, Harry says, says he knew nothing about the hacking because his family kept it from him. So if Harry knew nothing about it, how could it affect him? A lot of questions. A lot of people are always uh, questioning Harry. And I'm sure, like you said, they will be doing that this week as well. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Let's get into our Royal Roundup. And Princess Catherine joined the children at Chelsea Flower Show in London. This week, um, she surprised guests at the world-renowned Garden Show by joining children from 10 different elementary schools on the lawns by the bandstand. This looked like such a great event. She, um, the picnic was under a large horse chestnut tree, and it was part um, in an effort to bring gardening and nature into the lives of children, something that she is very passionate about. I love that she got down and was talking to each group of kids. Um, one asked her what it's like to be a princess. I just absolutely love this. I know. This was a this was a, an event that the princess actually helped put together and that brought school children, mostly local school children to the Chelsea Flower Show, which otherwise is kind of, it's kind of an elite event. Lots of people mm -hmm. can go, but the tickets are quite expensive. But by opening it up to children, teaching them about gardening and growing food and things like that, it was such a great experience for those kids. And it really encouraged, the purpose of the event was to encourage children and their families um, to get outside, have their own picnic, you know, be a part of nature, which is a huge, huge project of the Princess of Wales, you know, about supporting children in their early years, but also getting them outside, giving them these positive experiences. Absolutely loved seeing her. You know, she was drawing pictures of flowers. Mm -hmm. She was really, really getting into it with the kids. I think that's really where she shines. And definitely. And speaking of getting out into nature, she, the uh, Prince of Princess of Wales, released this amazing <laughs> photo of Princess Catherine handling bees um it highlighted world bee day and they wrote on instagram bees are a vital part of our ecosystem and today is a great opportunity to raise awareness of the essential role bees and other pollinators play in keeping people and the planet healthy i love this i love that she is up for anything <laughs> is christina is there anything she cannot do right, I mean, seriously <laughs> name this something she can't do people <laughs> yeah, yeah in the comments tell us yes. it's interesting because as she said in 2021 she told people at an event that she had they had their own aviary they were keeping bees and brought mm -hmm. honey to an event to share with people but i don't think it really dawned on us that that meant that she was the one out there in the suit getting the getting the honey i mean it's just it was really really cool to see her doing that um, and also just an incredible opportunity to raise awareness for World Bee Day. I, I really loved this. I think everyone was like, no way. No way. It doesn't look real, but yes, she is all hail the Queen Bee. I love it. Um, <laughs> well, while she was playing with bees, Prince William was getting his row on. He um, joined a rigorous rowing exercise alongside members of the Royal Navy for an important cause. Um, they wrote on Instagram, they shared an Instagram video saying, joining the past, present, and future crews of HMS Audacious for a very important conversation about mental health. They got 
got in the water. The full video, like I said, was shared by um, their YouTube channel and it saw him teaming up for that rowing workout. So take a quick look. How did that feel? Good. Yeah, good warm up, easy. I need the exercise, it's good. <laughs> this looks like hard work. I mean, they were they were saying that they, you know, they get in the ocean, they're uh, battling 40 foot waves. I can't even imagine doing something like that in this little rowboat. It's gotta be frightening. I know, I've, I've seen rowers sort of on like the river cam, which yeah. is very, very calm. I cannot right. imagine doing it in rough waters, but I loved that Prince William did this. It was such a noticeable campaign. You know, lots of people took notice mm -hmm. and something that he's so passionate about is talking about um, mental health within mm -hmm. sport because that really helps to reach the male population mm -hmm. um, and, you know, opening up conversations about mental health, even in something that might be seen as a very, you know, macho environment, mm -hmm. which is such an outdated way of thinking about it, but just opening up that conversation in all sorts of environments uh, during mental health awareness week yeah definitely well uh circling back to bees it must be a, a theme of the week because <laughs> king charles was gifted a very thoughtful homemade gift from david beckham of course you know he has always been rubbing shoulders with the royal family so it seems like this was a um a a, a, a normal thing i guess so he gifted the king a jar of honey that he had collected from his own bees that live in hives at his home and he presented the monarch with this thoughtful gift they had a private brief conversation about the Beckham's bees. And he seemed genuinely delighted that this gift, um, you know, the sustainable gift was given to him. And, you know, this is right up his alley. I love this so much. Yeah. I wonder what I, all the posh people are getting avian, <laughs> you know, like for the bees, I, when did we just stop growing vegetables? Like it used Harry's to be, you know, like <laughs> we thought it was cool that Megan and Harry have their own chicken coop, but apparently right. they still level up. <laughs> Seriously, you want to get high level, you go for bees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this was interesting. So Priyanka Chopra, Jonas and Richard Madden's spy thriller series Citadel features maybe a subtle joke and maybe a little dig at Princess Kate. Citadel was premiered on Prime Video this past April, follows the downfall of the global spy. So they, uh, they, they, they star as former spies attempting to piece together their past and so in episode three priyanka's character um meets with a crime leader and they basically say the chief of armed forces you might as well have asked me how to get between the legs of the dusters of cambridge yikes um so neither prime video production nor priyanka have further addressed the show's diss at the princess of wales who of course was previously the duchess of cambridge before um the queen passed away but I don't know. I mean, you can't, you can't write anything better than that. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit of a cheap, it felt like a bit of a cheap line. Like, you know, was this, I know there's a writer strike, but surely this right. predates that, right? Um, and it was just kind of a tacky, people aren't even, even if you aren't, you know, a huge royalist, people are like, that's not really the best joke I've ever heard. Uh, right. But it is, it, I guess, it makes for an interesting story, you know, has this earned them more, more views as so often that's where these choices come from. It is obviously interesting as Priyanka Chopra used to be really good friends with yes. Megan, the Duchess of Sussex, which I think yeah. just kind of adds to the drama of the story. So yeah, this was an interesting one. Very interesting. All right. Well, speaking of interesting, let's spill some royalty because we got a lot to get to. So Prince Harry addressed claims that he rents a hotel room to have alone time away from his wife. His rep told Page Six that this was simply not true. After The Sun reported that Harry would book a private room in a luxury hotel, the St. Vincent Bungalows, which he would visit without Meghan. The outlet also claimed that he chose a location near the couple's home in Montecito. And so the St. Vincent Bungalows is known for prioritizing the private of their ex exclusive guests with rules of no cameras inside their facilities. The hotel reportedly prohibits guests from sharing their experiences or approaching others inside the clubhouse as well. So this is simply not true, but, you, but I, listen, I'm you have seriously. two young kids at home, who among us? I mean, <laughs> I would do this. <laughs> Sign me up, San Vincent. I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> do you need us to review it? I mean, I know it says you don't want us to talk about our experience, but we'd be up for that. Seriously. Um, this is such a strange story because obviously they've completely denied it, but page yeah. six was, you know, really vehemently supporting this story. Uh, just that Harry sometimes gets away. You never know. Maybe Maybe they take turns. Maybe once a month they get a night off. Yeah. Some parents do that. Um, That's the craziest I don't know thing any in the world. Parents who wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> I know. I know. Like I said, sign me up. Where can I? Yeah. Like I'll be on the next flight out. Like, <laughs> and if they need to do it, let them. Who cares? Parenting is hard, guys. Even it if is. you have support, even if you have help, it's it's still hard. It is. All right. Well, let's get into the car chase that everybody has been talking about. As we know, they were involved 
allegedly involved in this two hour car chase throughout New York City. They requested photos taken of the ordeal. So Backgrid, which is a paparazzi entertainment photo agency, they told the BBC that they received a letter from the Sussexes regarding the photos and they allegedly wrote, we hereby demand that Backgrid immediately provide us with copies of all photos, videos and or films taken last night by the freelance photographers after the couple left their event and over the next several hour, hours. Well, Backgrid said, absolutely not. We're not doing that. They said, in America, as I'm sure you know, property belongs to the owner of it. Third parties cannot just demand it be given to them, as perhaps kings can do. Perhaps you should sit down with your client and advise them that there, that his English rules of royal prerogative to demand that the citizenry hand over their property to the crown were re rejected by this country long ago. We stand by our founding fathers, Jesus. Um, <laughs> as we know that they were involved in this highly aggressive, highly aggressive um, pursuit for over two hours after they left this um, Women of Vision Awards on May 16th. They were also joined by their mother, Daria Ragland. Yeah, they, you can't just demand somebody hand over their um, property. Yeah, and they, they, you know, they're clearly very comfortable communicating with their lawyers. <laughs> yeah, and I can't, yeah. And I don't understand how the lawyer who drafted this thought that this was a good idea. You just absolutely cannot, you know, you just can't do that. It's just, it's an interesting, you know, photo laws and protection laws for photos are so interesting because like they don't even have rights to photos of them, you know, that the photos belong to the person who took them or the person that they've sold the copyright to. And this is just basic. This is copyright 101. You know, I don't understand. Shame on the lawyers for letting them publish this because it actually just made them look a bit silly. It did. It made them look, look really silly and kind of more information that kind of trickled out about this. It's uh, very questionable. A lot of people have a lot of opinions, but the taxi driver who drove Harry and Meghan, I still can't believe they just jumped in a taxi after all this. <laughs> he told the BBC I was on 67th Street and then the security guard hailed me. Next thing you know, Prince Harry and his wife were hopping into my cab. He said that he was getting blocked by a garbage truck, which allowed photographers to catch up to them, to photograph them. And the security guard ultimately made the decision to return to the police precinct due to their concerns. He said they looked nervous. I think they were being chased the whole day or something. They were pretty nervous, but the security guard, he was on it. I don't think that's true. I think all, it's all exaggerated and stuff like that. Don't read too much into it. He added, New York City is the safest place to be. There's police stations, cops on every corner. There's no reason to be afraid in New York. I mean, if my family member, my mother died the way that his mother died, I would be a nervous wreck every time that the paparazzi got by him. I totally understand that. I just don't know if maybe it was the police chase that you think that you were in. I don't know. It's very hard to have a police chase in New York City. Yeah. And this is sort of the difficult thing. We've talked about this so much before where Megan and Harry are not careful enough with yeah. their statements, with the, the mm. public um, information they share because everything they say is meticulously yes. fact-checked mm -hmm. to a degree that I don't think anyone else has this level of sort of, you know, fact-checking and background knowledge. And a mistake that they made is sort of, I think it was a mistake to bring the NYPD into their statement because the NYPD was there like, listen, we've got all this documentation. The NYPD is legendary. And they came out with their own statement saying, this is what happened. They've got timestamps. They've got evidence to support yeah. it. And you have to remember, like, this is New York City. There's there's massive celebrities, politicians, royals in that city every single day, day in and day out. Meghan and Harry were probably not even the most famous person in that city that day. Right. No, it's you so true. And it and, and this was just sort of, again, I, I, I wonder, I worry about who's advising them because I they were very upset. Harry has a right to be upset and to sort of have that sort of trauma from what happened to his mother. But releasing this strongly worded statement in the way that they did when they know that it's going to be fact checked, right. um, just, it just made them look silly. Didn't it did. It? Well, and it was foolish. They didn't stay at a hotel. They stayed at somebody's private residence, which they yeah. didn't want to out where they were staying. So that's why they kept driving around. And I've seen celebrities get into cars. They could have pulled into a parking garage. I was there when Kim Kardashian got into a car, paparazzi were following her, following her. She got into a car, they pulled right into a parking garage and they can't go in there. There yeah. definitely could have been other measures taken and maybe yeah. they just weren't, don't have the right, like you said, the right people around them advising them because it definitely seems like it. And a lot of people have a lot of opinions about this. Whoopi Goldberg spoke out on The View and said that the spokesperson called it a near catastrophic car chase. Others said it wasn't bad, but I think people in New York know if it was possible to have car chases in New York, we'd all make it to the theater on time. <laughs> I, <laughs> I agree. 
Bethany Frankel, I mean, she's weighing in on this too. She said, I swear to you, this woman needs to get on the housewives. Just be a housewife, lean in and be infamous. It's not going that great. You alienated your base of fans. Gail King, who we know, she's um, always had their back. She told Page Six, I think it was a very unfortunate incident. It's troubling to me that anybody would try to downplay what that would mean to them. That's very scary and troubling to me. She said, I, I'm just really sorry it happened and very sorry they had to go through it. Everybody can all have of their opinions, but I always go back to how did they feel in that moment? I'm sure they were frightened. I'm sure, I, I'm sure I'd be frightened if somebody was following me around in a car as well. But... Yeah, it's like you said, I just don't think they have the right people around them. Yeah, I don't think they have the right people around them because they could have just sent a legal letter to the photo agency. Right. Or they could have sent a legal letter to the photographers. You know, they could have, you know, but this statement that sort of created this frenzy. Right was really where they went wrong. I, I, and I, you know, I, I do sympathize with how traumatic it must have felt, especially mm-hmm. in the moment and you're away from your kids and it's really scary. But, you know, the next step, especially since it was almost a full day later, they had taken the time to consider what to do next. And this right. decision that they made just ended up, I think, backfiring on them tremendously. Definitely. All right. Well, how could this have been avoided? What went wrong? Helping us break that down is Richard A. He's the security director of operations for Mobius International Security. And he's also going to weigh in on how he feels that this was a wrong decision that the UK um, denied him his police protection while he goes back home. So take a look at this. What went wrong in your opinion? I'm I'm not uh, familiar with the incidents actually in detail concerning the timeline. Um, And to be honest with you, from from all the media coverage, in regards to um, the couple's statement of uh, a two-hour chaotic car chase um, that could be catastrophic. Um, and the likes of the New York mayor coming out and saying there's reports of it's just 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that really, that, this, this, this information is really by and by. Ultimately, the, the concern here is the fact that you have um, a high-profile couple um, within the uh, public limelight with uh, se- severe public interest in them. And the paparazzi will do anything to gain their photos and follow them to confirm locations they're visiting, who they're meeting with, uh, to create that story that's needed in the media. And of course, it very much becomes a state of cat and mouse. Um, although uh, Harry left the royal family to undertake his own personal life, Um, he's very much in the limelight of the public interest. Mm -hmm. And he needs that public interest in order to promote his commercial ventures, as indeed does Meghan. And there has to be a relationship between the couple and the paparazzi, whereby um, it's workable. Mm -hmm. All of this chasing around town is not workable. And what was interesting to me as well is that, you know, they went to the police station, then they later hailed a taxi cab. And you don't know who's behind the wheel of a taxi cab either. either. And the taxi driver did come out and say, you know, this really wasn't a big deal. There wasn't really a car chase. But how dangerous it, is it for them to get into a vehicle that they don't know who's driving, really, and, and to get into a taxi cab? Well, to be perfectly frank, Christina, it's not actually that bad to use a taxi yeah. in the protection operations. What you have to ensure is that the no one sees you getting into that taxi. Mm-hmm. When you're using a, a, a yellow New York taxi cab, you're, you become one of hundreds of thousands within a city. You can easily be lost and, and uh, amongst and blend in with the population. Um, however, if someone sees you getting into the taxi, then you have just um, unearthed a whole uh, mountain of, of problems and issues. You're mm-hmm. using an untrained driver, uh, and the repercussions are just uh, catastrophic as well. If you're going to use a taxi, then you have to ensure that no one sees you getting in it. Mm-hmm. Now, that decision, you can guarantee the couple didn't preempt this at all. It's what happened with Princess Diana, and it's what happened here. And yes, there is a certain alignment to the situation with Prince Harry, his ongoing issues with the um, the use of UK police protection during his visits to the UK. And it was only reported just today that his um, uh, his court hearing has, has all been declined. His, his wish to pay for police protection has now been declined. Um, it's something that uh, the whole process with Prince Harry has, in my mind, been totally wrong, uh, a totally wrong approach to it. Um, and it's not a case of if 
uh, actions, hostile actions will occur against the couple is a case of when. Um, Prince Harry needs professional security. This incident with New York has highlighted the fact that he doesn't have that. Um, now, I'm not sure, I'm not privy to exactly how his security appears. Um, we can only gauge this through what we see on TV and read in the, in the papers. This incident is absolutely terrible um, on, on so many levels. Um, it's, it's just absolutely ridiculous and, and completely mind baffling. Um, he needs a, yes, he is to have in the US a commercial private sector provision of security, but that security should be overseen by a UK Met Police officer to ensure that standards are being delivered and also um, to have that access of intelligence flows as well from the UK intelligence agencies. So are you so you think it's a really bad decision that the UK um, government denied him that protection? So do you feel like the royal family now should pay for this security? No, no, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. um, Prince, Harry, Prince Harry has offered to pay um, and that's fine. The, I don't agree that the UK taxpayer mm -hmm. should fund a member of the royal family who no longer serves um, for the benefit of the country, right. but has his own commer commercial endeavours. Um, that's only right and proper that he should pay. Right. But that police protection, um, the Royal and VIP Executive Committee that make, makes the decision on, on who uh, gets what in terms of uh, the royal family and uh, members of parliament and the prime minister and so on, and how that security appears to what extent, um, they've made a, an absolute incorrect decision here. Um, it's, it's based on, um, to my mind, to my understanding of their determination, it's based on what they believe will be opening a can of worms mm. in terms of someone's paying for police protection um he gets it so then why can't i um which is a ridiculous notion because it's uh, even though this situation is unprecedented they can um easily deter make a determination on who gets what anyway they can override they can decide on who on who gets it prince harry is a senior member of the royal family regardless of whether he serves the crown or not he remains a seniority in terms of a uh, member of the royal family and by virtue of that fact he should receive police protection as per he would have done um, in, uh, as a serving member of the royal family. It's, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous that they've taken this away. Um, and uh, I do pity the couple, um, but they need a proper uh, approach to the provision of security. In my mind, they just aren't having it at the moment. Yeah, definitely a lot of factors to um, look into, but we'll have to wait and see what happens and how things change moving forward. But let's get into our royal history moment of the week. And the British government has revealed the total cost of executing Queen Elizabeth's state funeral. So the country's Treasury Department announced on May 18th that they spent an estimated 161 million euros on the occasion, which amounts to about 204 million dollars. Um, the Home Office, which takes responsibility for policing and national security measures, had covered the largest portion of the funeral costs at about 73.7 million pounds. So um wasn't cheap. <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't cheap, but it's interesting to look at these things in like a broad perspective. Lots of, you know, major sporting events, while not right. as much, still cost a tremendous amount of money in security. Um, but this was such a such a historic moment. I mean, you think about the queue and how iconic mm -hmm. that was and and you know the tremendously moving funeral it was it's been a very expensive few few years yeah. for the united kingdom in terms of you know paying for these massive royal events but it's a part of the culture and i think it is important to take it as part of a you know like look at it on a broader scale and think about things like when the olympics were in london those were hugely right. expensive of course. every major sporting event you know the concerts mm -hmm. that you have in in the uk those end up being very expensive as well mm -hmm. um but i just i think back to you know how moving that that 10 days of broadcasting was and seeing the people in london i'll i'll absolutely never forget it and how many people flooded i mean just flooded out of the tube stations oh. and again you need police officers there just to keep everyone mm -hmm. um, safe but for all the people who came out i think it was very very important that it they really had was. this infrastructure definitely it was worth every penny for yes, what a beautiful yes. cel <laughs> celebration of life it was it really was all right. Well, that is it for this week's episode of Royalias. Keep commenting, keep subscribing, and Christine and I will see you guys next week. Bye.
For more news content and exclusive interviews, make sure to hit the sub, like, and bell button down below and visit usmagazine.com.